Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I decorated two different junk mail envelopes and then make a belly band. So this one is the first envelope I'm starting with. It's just an envelope that I got, um, it was a return envelope that I got in some mail for like a bill or something like that that I didn't need. And what I did was I coffee dyed it and dried it and everything and then I'm going to collage on it. So the first thing I'm going to be adding here is some brown paper that was just some packaging paper that I probably got like in an Amazon shipment or something like that. I did ink around all the edges and I glued that down. This is some eco dyed paper that I have. I think this is from my porch prints. I'm not quite sure. If you guys need to know, just let me know in the comments below and I can look it up, but I think it's my porch prints. Just using my Elmer's glue stick here to glue down the pieces. And what I wanna do is try to avoid the little window as much as possible. And because I am using copy paper to do the collaging, I'm just using a glue stick. If I was using something a little more heavy duty, I would definitely be using a stronger glue, but with it being the copy paper, the glue stick works pretty well. So again, just putting some more pieces of this eco dyed paper down. I just want to have this as a base before I put my other layers on, and I'm just going to ink around all the edges as well. And like I said, I'm gonna pretty much cover the entire front of the envelope except that little window piece. This is a little scrap of paper that I got in some Happy Mail and I thought the colors are gonna go really well with the Ecodide paper and some of the embellishments that I'm using and the other papers that I'm using for the journal that I'm making. And actually, talking about that a bit, I made these envelopes and I'm making some of the ephemera that you've been seeing and I was anticipating putting it in a junk journal and I did put some of it in a junk journal. I was hoping to do more of a traveler's notebook size, which this envelope would have fit in a traveler's notebook size, but when I ended up cutting down the papers and things like that, because I use printables, because they have the edge that you have to take off when it prints since it doesn't go all the way to the edge, my journal ended up being just a little bit smaller than a normal traveler size notebook. So these envelopes don't fit, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to end up using these envelopes in a different project. But just kind of keep that in mind. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're making all this ephemera before you actually make the journal, if you're not careful, you could have pieces that don't quite match or make uh, or fit in the in the journal, which is fine because you can always use them in another project. But just kind of keep that in mind. I don't always maybe think ahead quite as well as I should, but um, no big deal, like I said, because I'll use it someplace else. So I glued down a couple more pieces of paper. Uh, some of that is tea stained cookbook paper and then I have this little mushroom and you're gonna see that the little mushroom is gonna get folded down because the flap of the envelope the top mushroom is kind of sticking up but that will work out just fine I was a little worried about it but it ends up looking out okay looking okay here I'm just chopping up some muslin that I tea dyed and some what is that called cheesecloth that I tea dyed and I'm just trying to make kind of make a messy little border and then I will end up stitching with a little I think zigzag stitch yeah and a straight stitch and I was gonna put it right there on the right hand side but I really didn't like how that looked so you're gonna see that I'm gonna move that fabric strip to the bottom left and you can see when I fold it over it kind of gets cut off that top mushroom but I think it looks okay so now I'm just kind of contemplating where I want that to go seeing what else I have in my stash, see if I want to put any more mushrooms down. Like I said, I was a little concerned about that tall mun getting cut off, but I decided it was going to end up being okay. So now I cut out a little butterfly. I'm going to cut out another one, glue it down. I like the colors of these guys. I'm going to cut out one more, just looking through my printables here. I think this is Luna Ruse or something like that. Oh, I can't remember where I got those little butterflies. But again, if you ever having questions about anything, please leave those in the comments below and I can look that up. Now I'm just going through my stamp book, trying to find a stamp that I think would look good. Since it is an envelope, I thought it would be appropriate. Adding a little glue on the back. This one's from Uganda, or at least it says Uganda on it. It's a canceled stamp. Um, a good place to get canceled stamps is Etsy or eBay. I think eBay tends to be just a little bit cheaper, but I have found some really good deals on Etsy as well, um, especially if they're canceled stamps. The canceled stamps are much cheaper than the non-canceled stamps. So you can see there, I also took some black stitching and I stitched it all around the envelope. I just wanted to give it some extra texture. I really like how that looks. It does make your pocket just a little bit tinier, but nothing too big. So I wanted to, to um, add that extra texture. Here's another printable that I had from Love Junk Journals from the little kit that I'm using. I 
what is it, inked around, I couldn't think of the word, inked around the whole edge of it. And then I'm just adding it to book page because I'm going to make this into a little pocket and it's on copy paper. It wasn't sturdy enough. So I'm just gluing this down to some book page. I'm going to stitch all the way around the entire little image here with a zigzag stitch. And then I'm going to add that down, gluing down three of the four sides so that I can stick that little tag or a little um, thing on this side here. So I'm just measuring. I was going to use that little printable. I tested it out first, but it was a little too small. So this is just some cream colored cardstock that I'm going to collage on and use it as a little tag that kind of fits into that little slot. So just using some of the papers that I've already used to cover the envelope, gluing those down. A lot of those again are real thin paper, so I'm using my glue stick that works just fine. And then I'm going to also add a little butterfly on here after I trim out the excess. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, I actually edited this video maybe two weeks ago and I just didn't get around to voicing over it. But I think I end up messing with the little tab that I put here on the right hand side here in a little bit. It just wasn't working right. So you're going to see me messing with that here in a little bit. First, I'm going to glue this little cute butterfly on here. I really like how the front of this looks and I wanted to keep the back a little more simple. So I'm just going to glue down the three sides. Oh yeah, I guess I did mess with it, but I didn't keep it all on camera because this video is a little bit long. So I ended up just playing with the little tab tag off camera. You can see in the top right, I have some index card on the back of it that it was tea dyed, or tea dyed and um, stained with some of my sprays. And then you can see the little tab there. So I did do it off camera. Oh, here, no, I am going to mess with it a little bit more. So I did some of it off camera to spare you some of it, um, but I'm going to finish it off here in a second. So this is just a whale tab punch that I have from Stampin' Up. This is, is um, retired and what I wanted to do was the tab that I put on first was just copy paper and it was way too flimsy. So I ended up taking some of my Tim Holtz packaging which is a lot more thick and sturdy and then punching it out with that and then that tab works a lot better. So when you put it in and out of the little pocket it stays you know more firm and you have more of a grip and doesn't fold and bend on you. So you can see here I'm just kind of repairing that and then that will go into that pocket right there and I think that's really cute. So that is that envelope done and then I'm going to move on to a second envelope here in a minute. Oh sorry at first I forgot I didn't want that background of the window showing so I am going to pull out some other paper and this is more of that eco dyed paper putting some glue stick on the back of that and then putting that on the back of the envelope so that's what you see through the little window. And I think I do struggle with this just a little bit. I may or may not have put this all on camera, but um, it's a little hard to get in that pocket. You know, you can also open your envelopes and put all your stuff on the inside first and then reseal everything. That's another option. I just didn't really want to do that. I feel like it was just going to make the envelope too weak when you pull it apart like that. So I end up just kind of, you know, working with it. Here is another envelope. That's from Junk Mail. This window is on the right hand side instead of the left. Here is some pattern paper. I just wanted to add two pieces of that. I'll put some in the bottom left and the top right. Again, using my glue stick, that seems to work pretty well with it being very thin. And then I use a little card, a little key card from a hotel to just smush that all down. Folding over the edges instead of cutting it off, I kind of like how it adds um, an edge to the envelope. Gluing more down, trimming it around. I like also how the lines and stuff on the pattern paper show. This is more eco dyed paper. I'm going to add some chunks of this to the envelope as well. And you're going to see this envelope I did struggle with quite a bit. Um, when I put all the papers down, it just seemed a little bit too bright, which is a little funny because these are all very muted, but just seemed too bright and too bold. So I'm going to play with it a lot to tone down the background. So you're going to see kind of how I do that here in just a little bit. Here's more of that scrapbook paper that I got in Happy Mail that I'm going to add here. And then just trimming out the excess. I did want to fold it over so I just added a little extra when I trimmed it and then used glue and then folded that over. That's also a thin scrapbooking paper so I used my glue stick on that. Didn't like that straight edge so I'm just cutting it with my finger or ripping it with my finger. Felt like I needed a little bit more here on the left side. I wanted to bring that blue paper over here so it wasn't just on the right. And I'll add some more glue stick to that, glue that down, and then trim out the excess. Kind of the same way I just did, so I can fold it over.
and you can see I just kind of cut the edge there so that I wouldn't have a bunch of bulk in the bottom corner. Here is some Tim Holtz tissue paper. I wanted to put this down, but I didn't want the hard edge, so I did trim around the roses and then added that to the left-hand side. And then I have this other rose here. You can see I'm just very you know, quickly cutting this. It's not the easiest thing to cut because it is tissue paper, but if you're kind of careful, you can get it um, a rough cut around whatever image you're trying to cut out. Add some glue stick, use my little card to smooth it down, and it's there. So here I'm going to add, this is, oh, I never can remember what this is. It's from like a key punch or something like that from old um, work days when you did some, you'd punch out the little cards. I can't remember what they're called. I think my mom actually might have used these when she used to work at an electric company. But anyway, I got these at an antique mall. And then I'm just gluing these down. And sorry if you can hear my dog. I, he's in the other room barking probably at one of the other dogs that is eating his bone or something. He doesn't like when the others play with his toys because he's a little brat. He's the baby of the family. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear him or not, but he's hopefully stopped barking now. If he keeps going, I will go get him. Gluing some more tissue paper down. I just didn't like somehow those edges were kind of coming together. They looked a little too harsh, so I'm adding this down. And then here's where I'm kind of seeing that, you know, although I like what this looks like, it's just too bold. There's just, I don't know, it's just too much going on. It looked a little bit messy and just overwhelming. So I am going to just keep going with this. I do end up liking it in the end, but I do have to do a lot to it um, before I'm happy with it. Here's just some three-in-one glue that I really like. Because these cards are like more of a card stock, I am adding this glue because it's not going to stick very well with the glue stick. And those cards also are tea dyed, so they do have a little bit of um, kind of more texture to them just because they have the tea dyed stain on them. So they look a little bit more vintagey, and they kind of just match in or blend in a little bit more with the products I'm using. So I really want to use that little image there of the owls. I really love the colors, and I thought they went really well with that bluish scrapbook paper that I'm using. And then here's where I'm like, it's just too much. It's just overwhelming. So I'm taking some gesso and I'm using my key card to scrape it down because I want it a really messy look. I use my fingers. I'll use this, just kind of pushing it around everywhere. I will use my heat tool to dry it. And I'm still going to think that this is just too much. It's just too loud, too bold. It's just not doing it for me. So First, you don't succeed, try, try again. Is that the saying? <laughs> so you're going to see here that I'm just going to keep doing this. And then ultimately what I'm going to end up doing is I grabbed some backing to an envelope, or envelope, I'm sorry, backing to a napkin. And I am going to put that down. And then that just kind of helps mute it down just a bit more. So you're going to see me here. I'm going to get ready to glue that. Didn't like how that looked. And here's that little napkin. So this is a good way to use the napkin bases. So if you're using the top part to decoupage, you can use the bottom piece here to do this. It's kind of like tissue paper. Um, it looks really opaque here, but once you add a little bit of Mod Podge and water, you'll see that it really kind of just adds um, a layer on top. It also adds a lot of texture and it mutes down the colors of the background just a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little water to my Mod Podge. Another thing to you, that you can use is gel medium. I didn't have any of that. Um, I've heard that Mod Podge, depending on your climate, can leave your projects a bit sticky even after they dry. I haven't had that problem, but I was a little worried about that. So I did recently purchase a little tub of, um, what is it called, gel medium at Hobby Lobby because they had it on sale. So I haven't tried that yet, but um, I heard that works really well. So I just wet my brush and traced around the little window of the envelope and then pulled that out so that I didn't cover up the window. I thought my Mod Podge was just a little too wet, so I add a bit more. And then I'm going to do half the envelope here, just painting it on. I'll put down the napkin and then I'll paint the other side. So this is really simple, just painting it all over. It's pretty messy. I just use my paintbrushes that I use for all my other stuff. And as long as I put it in water right afterwards, it seems to keep the bristles okay. It doesn't really seem to ruin it. Now, I wouldn't use like a super fancy paintbrush for this, but it works really well for this and I haven't had any problems if it like getting really stiff and unusable for other things. You just need to make sure you get it in water right away and rinse it out. Preferably warm water, I think that works a bit better. So you can see here um, it's still looking very opaque, but once it dries you're going to see how it, it becomes a lot more translucent. Just cleaning up my window there, making sure it's all smushed down. 
and you got to be kind of careful because it does rip up the napkin very easily so I'm just kind of playing with it and getting it how I like it and then I'll just rip around the edges because the edges are all wet so they come off pretty easily I don't need to use my scissors or anything for that and I also kind of like tearing around the edges rather than cutting them because it gives a little bit more of a texture to them so you can see here I'm just adding a little bit more water so I can more easily pull that off you can also wait till it dries a little bit it might come off a little easier so here you can see that it's pretty translucent from where the napkin was and it's got a kind of a cool texture um, I do like how this looks um, I do want feel like it needs to be sanded because it was just a bit too like rough and bumpy and I need it just need to be sanded so I took a really fine grit sandpaper sanded it off wiped it off and then dried it and then now I'm going to put the little owl image that I have here again just using my three-in-one glue it keeps it from wrinkling so I really like that glue for this kind of thing especially like little images that I'm not necessarily collaging on and then I'm just taking my finger and just mushing it down and any glue that comes out the edges I'm just rubbing off I felt like this still was getting a little lost on here so I'm going to kind of play around and see what else I can do I was gonna pull up the corner but it just was glued down too much but I thought adding this little doily over here would tone down the left side a bit more this is a yellow doily that I have coffee dyed a bunch of times I usually use this to um, put texture on some of my coffee dyed papers and I thought it looked really pretty now that it had been teed and coffee dyed stained so many times that I wanted to use it on this project just trimming out the little bits here on the edge and then kind of looking it over seeing what else I need to do on this I felt like I needed something there on the doily now that it's sitting down on the page so I fussy cut a couple little butterflies out and I really think this is kind of tying everything together now because the colors on the blue die cut of the owls is matching some of the blues and lighter colors that I'm putting on the or that are have on the butterflies and then I also have more of that little punch paper that's in a blue that I've coffee dyed and I'm adding that to pick up on the blue of the owls so gluing these little guys down with some of that three in one again that keeps them from wrinkling this envelope is pretty busy still which is fine I'm gonna actually make it more busy because I'm gonna add some lace to it and some twine so this is a pretty pretty intense envelope like I, I don't know I like how it looks but it is pretty pretty crazy so <laughs> you can tell me in the comments below if you like this one or not I think I like the one I did first a little bit more this one's a bit much but you know it works I do like it it's interesting it's fun I'm definitely gonna keep it and use it one of my journals but it's probably you know a little bit more than I would normally put down so here you can see I just trimmed that lace it had kind of like a double edge on top and bottom and I didn't want all that so I just trimmed it in half I'm adding some coffee or not sorry some ink to it to kind of tone it down my three-in-one glue gluing it down I'll put that piece there at the bottom and then I'll put another piece at the top Again, I'll just use my ink to kind of tone it down a bit because it was too white. More three in one, stick that down. And then I felt like it needed something else because now it was too white and it needed something to ground it a bit more. So you'll see I'm going to pull out some like jute twine. And I'm going to add that on as well. Oh, this is pretty frilly. <laughs> So here is some of that jute twine that I was talking about. I think this came in some happy mail and I just keep that in my stash to the top right of my screen so I can just grab from that and use up all my stuff and then I'll glue that. I felt like that just kind of grounded it a bit more. I don't know, the brown, I thought it was a little bit floaty. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I thought this kind of grounded it a bit and I end up liking how this looks, like I said, but it is a bit much. It's a little a bit of an intense envelope, if you will. <laughs> So I think that is it. Just kind of trimming off some of the excess twine here. That was a little bit too much. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of a close-up. I will end up putting a backing also. Oh no, sorry. I have to back, fix the back of the envelope. There, It was too plain back here with all the little edges that I folded over. So I do end up putting some coffee dyed paper on the back of this to just kind of cover up all those miscellaneous edges. And then I also will put a piece of paper behind the window of the envelope so also you don't see the background of what the current envelope looks like. So here I just cut out the tea dye paper, glued it down, and just kind of gives a little bit cleaner of an edge on the back here. And then I'm going to trim some of the envelope pieces that are sticking up a bit much to kind of clean it up a bit. And then the back looks much better. So 
So I do want to collage on this a bit because um, it looked a little too plain. I like how it kind of gave a clean slate with the tea dye paper on the back of it, but I did feel like I needed to add a little bit more just to kind of tie it in with the front part of the envelope. So I have this eco dye paper again. I'm just going to use the scraps that I have been using. I'm going to glue those down. I have this dictionary paper that has been coffee stained. And I'm going to add that as well, just ripping it up to see how I would like it. I kind of auditioned it first before I glued it down just to make sure I was going to like it in the places I picked. And then I'm just using my glue stick and gluing that down and then also using my blending tool to add some color around the edges to match it with the paper on the front. So just inking and gluing, inking and gluing, and then I believe I do put some fussy cut images on the back here if I'm remembering correctly. Like I said, it's been a little while that I did this voiceover and or did this editing of the video and I can't quite remember what I did on this back part. But I'm pretty sure I did add a little bit more. Just trimming off the excess from where I collaged, folding in some of the edges on the top. Yeah, here's that little butterfly I'm going to add. I just did a little bit of inking on him just to tie him back in. He's a little too bright and I really like that color combination with the tea dye paper. And then because I used mushrooms on the other page, I'm auditioning a couple mushrooms here to see if I like anything. I do like this. Again, just taking my little brush tool and inking around to blend it in a bit more with the background. Again, keeping the color so it's not quite so bright, it mutes it down and just kind of ties everything in a little bit better. Use my glue stick and then I glue that little mushroom cluster down. I think that is all. That is enough. That envelope was, is very, very, very done. <laughs> I am going to add just that background piece that I mentioned a minute ago. This is just some of the brown packing paper that's wrinkled up, added some distress ink to it, and then I am going to add one of these stamps. This is an old Stampin' Up! stamp. I'm probably pretty sure it's been retired. It's just a messy kind of you know background stamp. And I thought it just gave a little bit of fun speckly look to the paper. So it looked a more, bit more grungy. And then I'll put that in the back of the envelope. Again, struggling with it, I'm sure, to try to get it in that pocket and fit it down to the bottom. But in the end, it ends up turning out okay. So there you go. I really like how that looks. And then I did stitch all the way around the envelope with a straight stitch with a dark thread. And then I am inking just to kind of ground everything. So this is the last piece that I'm doing in this particular video. Sorry, I know this video is a bit longer than my normal videos, but I wanted to get this belly band in here too because it's a pretty short clip, not too long. Um, I'm just adding um, the belly band so that I can tuck some things behind it when I put it in the journal. This is some coffee paper that is, or coffee dyed paper that is on a cardstock. And then those are some tags that are from the Love Junk Journal set that I just stitched around and inked. So here is some really fun lace and I like the blue color. It matches some of that scrapbook paper I was using in the other ones or the envelopes. And I'm just going to glue that to the cardstock. And I like the base that I used here because it has a coffee dyed stain. It just kind of adds a little bit to it instead of using like a white strip since that lace is pretty um, white already. It kind of just tones down everything and it just looks a little bit nicer I think. The three one glues all down there. Just use my card so I don't get all over my fingers. I'm going to tuck over the edges so they have nice clean edges. And then what I'm going to do on the belly band is I'm going to take some of the Love Junk Journal's ephemera and I'm going to kind of do a cluster on the belly band. So you can see here I have a bunch of things that I've already cut out, some things I haven't, and I'm just trying to see what I would like to use and I decided to pull out the one with the poppies on it. And so I'm going to use that kind of as a base and then I want to use this circle butterfly and I do not have a punch that fits the circle so I'm going to end up just carefully cutting it with my scissors. It's definitely not a perfect circle just because you know cutting a circle is just not the easiest thing but it ends up working out fine. I'm going to ink around all the edges and then that piece that I have already down with the flowers on it it's already on a thicker cardstock I believe. Or maybe I'm going to, oh, I'm going to glue it down. Sorry, it is on a copy paper, so it's a little bit too thin and doesn't have enough heft to it. 
So I glue that down on some book page. I'm going to ink around the edges and then I'm going to add that to this belly band. Just kind of layering the different pieces here and I thought it'd be fun to have round edges instead of the, squ the square or the straight edges. So I just do that and then re-ink around the edges again. I really enjoy using circle elements in my collaging and in my scrapbooking and that kind of thing. I just think that it really balances out some of the square sides and things that we use in our in our collages. So I like when I can um, incorporate a more circular element. Here are just some eagle stamps that I have in my stash, trying to figure out how that can be incorporated with this little cluster that I'm making. This is a cigarette card which I thought would be nice. It looked nice as a little base on the back of this. And I thought about using those buttons, but I decided I didn't want to pull them off the card. So I just have this jar that I got at an antique store of these kind of mother of pearl buttons and other just white buttons. And I really like how that looks. So I'm just going to start gluing everything down with my three in one glue. And I can't remember, I might put twine also on the button. I don't really like my buttons being naked, so a lot of times I put twine or a string through it. And I think I do that on this one, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So this is just a piece of string that came off of um, some fabric that I kind of I pulled it out to fray the edges, and this was what was left over. And I thought that would be perfect for this kind of thing, and I'm glad I kept it because I really like the texture that it brought to uh, this little piece here. Gluing that down with my three-in-one glue again. Just how I like it and I really like how that bow turned out. I like how it added some extra texture to this little cluster. Just cleaning up some of my glue mess that I made and then I will glue that down. So that's pretty much all the video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and if you haven't already please subscribe. If you have any questions leave those in the comments below and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Have a great day everyone. Bye bye.